All right, welcome back. Here we are working on the Williams System 11B auxiliary driver power board. I've put one of the bridge rectifiers in and I've replaced two of the electrolytic capacitors. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run one of the jumpers here since I've got one of the bridge rectifiers in. So I'm going to carefully drop some solder onto this jumper and attach it to one of the legs of the bridge rectifier. Take a look at it, make sure it's nice and solid. And I like to prop the board up in different spots so I can get the solder to flow in different directions. So I'll put a little bit more here. And there we go. So I've got one of the jumpers already in place, half of this jumper. It's going to attach to the leg of the bridge rectifier here, so I have to put that in first. This is one of the bridge rectifiers already in, and I'm going to clip the things off of it. And this is going to the other bridge rectifier pin. So now we're ready to put the second bridge rectifier in. So we're going to turn it over. These are two new capacitors that I put in. Whenever I uh, replace one capacitor, I usually hop on the computer and order a couple more, so I've always got extras. And this is a situation where I looked at these and realized that I had some spares. They cost about three to five cents a piece, so it's easy thing to do to swap them out. These electrolytic capacitors tend to dry up. So now I'm gonna take this bridge rectifier, which is actually rated higher than the one that was in the board. This one's 400 volts. The other one was 200. And I'm setting it off from the board a little bit so that it should cool better. get all these holes to line up. There we go. Now, once it's dropped in, let's see, I'm going to pull it out a little bit and then bend some of the pins on the back side so that it hangs down a bit. So there's some airflow underneath the bridge rectifier too. Keep it cool. Keep it too close to the board just generates too much heat. So there's one leg done. Obviously, when you're dealing with bridge rectifiers, heat from the soldering iron is not a super concern because these things generally get really, really hot. So I can, I can heat it up a bit and get that solder to drip down to the other side where the other traces are. Although in this case, we know the traces are gone because I'm having to route around them. Another nice thing about these bridge rectifiers is because of the orientation of the pins, it's uh, it's hard to put them in wrong, unlike an electrolytic capacitor where if you desolder it and you weren't paying attention and it's not marked on the board and it's a polarized cap, you might forget. 
which way it went in. So I look on the underside here just to check. I like I like the clearance of of them off the board. It's nice. It's uh, I think that works nicely. So there we've got the bridge rectifiers in. Now I'm going to add the final patches. We have basically this go into here. So I'll take it and just bend it ever so slightly around that leg like that. Take the soldering iron and hold it down. Eat the whole thing up. Oh. It wants to lift off the board. Got to be careful if I heat it up too much, it's going to melt the insulation on the wire. I think that's good. I think it's a nice solid link. Now we've got this one. Now I'm going to straighten this lug up a little bit before I put this guy on it. So this last jumper goes right there, right around this. So I'm going to try to put him there and bend just a little bit. Like that. And if you obviously, if you cut, cut it to the perfect length, it doesn't flop around. And then when you solder it, it pretty well stays in place. Since these are high power leads, I'm going to be a little bit careful about making sure. So there we have the new jumpers in place. So now I'll take this, clip these off. We have uh, repaired the high voltage section here. Two new bridge rectifiers, two new electrolytic capacitors, all new fuses. This trace I checked it that had been run before. It seems to be okay. And we've duplicated the burnt traces on the underside of the board. Now all that's left for me to do is to fire up the continuity tester and just check to make sure that everything is where it should be. And uh, I think this will be ready to test. That's it. You can see more at uh, pinballhelp.com. Thanks for watching.